Welcome back again ladies and gentlemen, my name is Philip and today it is time to use Aurora HDR which is a fantastic HDR software uh, and just edit an image, just check edit from start to finish and see what we can do. Today's image that we're going to work on has been taken in Japan recently or more specifically at Shi uh, in Tokyo at Shibuya Crossing and if you have never heard of Shibuya Crossing that's cool, neither did I, but it is one of the, uh, the most busy uh, cross junctions essentially on the planet. But because of that, it is absolutely fantastic for photography. I went to this place three times on three different days, uh, depending on the weather and the time of day, to get different pictures of people walking by, cars, traffic, high, low, it was absolutely beautiful. Today we're going to work on one of these night images, specifically this particular one right here. And we're going to use Aurora HDR to really make that pop a little bit more and transform it to that image right here in only a couple of minutes. Awesome! Let's do this! Now, before we actually start, we need to add our images to, well, Aurora HDR 2019. Here's a bit of a secret. I actually made that image from one image and not how you would typically do with three or more photos with different exposures. While well, it was nine people were moving and though I took three images, you can see that, for example, the, uh, the plus two exposure, it's, it's totally wonky. It cannot be used, so we will not use it. So instead, we're going to use the only one exposure, which is the zero exposure and going to work with that. Fantastically though, with an at least somewhat decent camera and Aurora HDR, you can get fantastic results, even though you are only quote unquote creating a pseudo HDR. So let's grab that image. I said, let's grab that image and throw it in Aurora. Now, once you do that, it's gonna ask you if you wanna create an HDR and you say, well, yeah, sure. Here we are. Awesome, so let's get started. And first things first, I mean, maybe let's bring the image down a little bit because it is far too high for the scene that we have. So there is a little crop function just at the top here. Um, make sure you unlock the lock because if you don't, and I find it hardcore annoying, it does it proportionally. And I, I, I never, I never have cropped something proportionally. I always go from side to side, but maybe that's just me. Anyway, so off with the lock. Let's bring it down to something like maybe something like that. Sure, why not? Hit the enter key and that is our base to start with. Now there are a couple of things that I want to do. Um, these are the presets that you can use, but today we don't use them. We're just going to do stuff manually because it's a bit more fun and especially for a video to show you how easy you can use that software. What I always, always do before I do anything is I create a new layer. So let's hit a new layer symbol or the new layer button and create a new adjustment layer. So let's start, for instance, by, what do we start with? Let's say with the colors of the umbrella and then the brightness, and then we work our way from there. So for the colors, what we want to do is probably we want to increase the smart tone a little bit. Smart tone makes everything just a bit more bright, which is kind of where we want to go. So let's do that. Something like this, maybe. Then we want to increase saturation. Absolutely. And I'm literally only looking at the umbrella in the very center of the image here right now, because that is what I want to pop. A bit of HDR clarity is going to bring out that rain really, really beautifully, not just on the umbrella, but also here. And let's see, what else could we do? We could add some HDR clarity, uh, yeah, clarity itself, but it might take it too far. No, no, it's kind of cool. I like it. Let's use it. Let's use it. Mm. And of course, why not a little bit of denoise because while we're here, might as well. Now, a bit of image radiance would make it a bit more gloomy. And for that scene, I don't know if it's necessary. So let's just not do it. Now, I only want that stuff that we have just done, especially because it makes the rest of the image a bit too hard, maybe, in the umbrella for now. Whatever, let's go ahead and brush that in there. So you can just simply click on the little pencil, uh, not pencil, on the little brush symbol right here, select brush, and then de choose if you want to paint the effect in or if you want to erase the effect. In my case, I want to paint it in. So I'm going to go and paint that stuff in the umbrella. Cool. Now that we have that, we have a nice before and after. Let's have a look at here. Yeah, the umbrella pops now a little bit more and it's our first attention grabber in the image. So what we're going to do from here, let's work on the general brightness and the general feel of that photo. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. Awesome. So we're going to do many things that we have just done for the umbrella again, but this time for the rest of the image. And they're going to add up onto the umbrella so that it's always sticking out slightly. First of all, let's use some smart tool. Let's bring it up a notch. Let's bring it to something like this. Why not? 
Let's get our highlights up just a little bit, maybe do something like that. And usually you would op open up your shadows and you would, you know, bring down your blacks and stuff like that. Let's see how the blacks look. If we bring them down, we can bring them down ever so slightly, but I wouldn't bring them up too much. And for the whites, mm, considering the background lights and all this kind of stuff, I would prefer to probably bring these lights, these particular lights here down later and add a vignette. So let's just go and keep going. We want to have a little bit more vibrance. It is a night scene. There are like neon lights everywhere. So let's bring up that vibrance a little bit right here. A bit of smart structure only for that rain that we have here. So if I add a bit of smart structure, it's going to bring that out a little bit more. And I really like that. Fantastic. A bit of denoiser, why not? I mean, it's a night photo that has been HDR'd, uh, so I'm always adding a little bit. And just a tiny bit of image radiance. Not too much, but it's just making it ever so slightly so gloomy. And again, not a lot, not a lot, because I don't think it fits the scene very much, at least for my personal taste. Uh, glow, I don't think we want to have that in the situation, because please not, or please don't. Now, here's what we can do. We can go and add some vignetting. Before I add vignetting, I want to test something quickly. So on the top here, I have the image temperature and I always do like going up and down. I apologize for the confusion there. But let's drag that to the blue and see if we like that more. Or let's drag it to the yellow and see if we like either more. So if we were to drag it slightly to the left hand side into the blue, because it is still a night scene, but not a lot, just ever so slightly. And then also into the magenta more or the purple and pinkish um, yeah, colors, then I think the image might take on a little bit more of its natural night color. And we can easily test that by HDR basic on and off. And I'm only looking at color here. I'm trying to ignore all the other light stuff. And I think it's a little bit better. I think I like it. Cool. Where was I? Vignetting. So I want to add a bit of vignetting, a lot of vignetting. So I'm going to click, I create that in here just like that. And I really do not care if it's getting really dark on the surrounding. That is fine because I want to bring up the brightness and really draw only attention to that couple in the very center there, right? Only just like that. Now, the only problem that I see with that is it brightens up the umbrella so hard that uh, the effects of yeah, well, anything really goes, gets lost in the umbrella. So instead of doing the vignette right now, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to create the vignette here. So let's bring that down to something like uh, that again. Bring up that inner brightness really a lot, something like that. And now I'm simply going to use the brush and say I want to erase the effect from a certain area. Not all of it, but maybe say for 35% or whatever uh, of it so that we have that uh, yeah, umbrella still in the way that we had it initially with all its beautiful colors. Fantastic. Love it. Now we could now continue like in my original editing, I might have taken down the brightness here a little bit. I think one thing I'm going to quickly going to do on the new layer is that this on the left hand side, that arm here is their actual professional photographer that they had booked for the night. So in my case, I don't like that arm very much. Well, I mean, I, I do like it for the story. So that's why I keep it in there. But I don't like the red it has. So it grabs too much attention. So I'm just going to bring down the saturation in that area. Or even better, even better, we're going to take the red itself using the SH, uh, HSL layer or adjustment and bring down the red ever so slightly, just like that. And I'm going to make sure, of course, that I use a brush. I'm going to paint the effect into my image with an opacity of 100%. I'll just take the red out from his arm so that it doesn't compete with the red from her dress, right? And that's literally the only thing I care about because the dress is fantastic. Awesome. So once we have that, stop brushing. I think, I think we are good with that. Once we have that, we went from this, this original image, which was not three images altogether, it was only one, and we transformed it into this in Aurora in only a couple of minutes. Or if you prefer that slider back and forth, it's a day and night difference. Holy Lord, I love Aurora HDR. And there we go. If we compare the before and after, definitely much, much better. And if you do like Aurora HDR and you are into HDR photography, I do encourage you to do a bit more research on Aurora because it is really, really fantastic. Otherwise, I hope you liked the video. If you did like the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. Huh, that's when you forget your text. Oh yeah, and if you're new to the channel, do not forget to subscribe. I'm out of here for today, gonna grab a coffee on a rainy Dublin Sunday. And I shall see you next time. Have a good one. Bye!